Let's do some trig. Chapter 7, and we're looking at uh, sections uh, 5 and 6 here. And we have already gone over this in class once, but let me review it real quickly. Trigonometry is uh, because the ratio, for example, of uh, opposite over hypotenuse is the same for all right triangles of a particular angle. So therefore, we can call that ratio sine of angle A, and you will remember that, let's do it this way, uh, normally we see it just like this, and but we pronounce it as sine of angle A, or we'll see like that, and we pronounce that as cosine of angle A, and these are kind of like abbreviations as it were, shorthand, tangent of angle A. And the sine of angle A is always, or the sine of an angle, is always the length of the opposite side. So here is angle A, and in reference to angle A, this is the opposite side. And uh, remember though, if I was to shoot from and be doing the sine of angle B, this actually would be the opposite side, opposite of angle B. So it does matter which angle you are doing your uh, trigonometry on. But the sine of an angle is always the opposite, the length of the opposite side over the length of the hypotenuse. Whereas cosine is the length of the adjacent side over the length of the hypotenuse and tangent is the length of the opposite side over the length of the adjacent. And you can remember that by Sokatoa, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent equals opposite over, over adjacent. Or, that doesn't help me at all, <laughs> or you could say some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid. But you also remember that the FSA reference sheet has these uh, ratios, the trigonomic ratios, on the reference sheet. So let's talk about applying them. We practiced them here on the front page, but let's go through the back page. And let me walk you through how to think this through. Will this help here? Uh, that's fine. So if you want to uh, just pause the video and uh, copy down the answers, you can do that. And also, um, the last section uh, here, I've already done that for you. So if you want to pause the video and copy down the answers, uh, you can. But let me walk through the thinking of these to help you to make sure that you can do this on your own. The goal is not just for you to copy this down. In fact, there's no assignment for you to turn in. I'm just doing this video for your information sake to make sure that you know how to do these trig problems because on the midterm there's a number of trig problems. Uh, we will practice in class, but I want to make sure that you know how to do it. So remember, it has to. We can only do trig on a right triangle. So across from your right angle is always going to be your hypotenuse. So label that as the hypotenuse. In this case, they only gave us one angle and one side, and they're asking us to solve, telling us <laughs> to solve each uh, tri or solve each of these triangles. Uh, to solve this triangle we need to know what the length of each of the sides are. So I'm going to call this side over here x. I could have called it y, or it doesn't matter what variable you call it. Uh, let's call this side over here uh, y. And we're doing trig from this one particular angle, so we can go ahead and label this side uh, as the opposite side. It's opposite from the 62 degree angle. And this side here is the adjacent side. It is adjacent to the 62 degree uh, angle. Now remember, uh, you also, it'd be helpful to find the measure of this angle over here, which would be, what is that, 28 degrees. 
uh, because the sum of the interior angles is 180 degrees and so you take away 90 from that and you're left with 90 so there's 90 degrees uh, between these two angles and 90 minus 62 would give us 28 so we do know that this angle is 28 degrees and we could do trig from that angle but uh, and, and if, if we did then this side over here would be the opposite side and in reference to this angle and this side would be the adjacent side in reference to this angle but let's just keep it simple and only do trig from the angle that they give to us in that case this is the opposite side and this is the adjacent side so let's find uh, the, the length of side x here and so notice that I have the opposite they give me the opposite and I want to find the adjacent so what trig function uses opposite and did I say adjacent I did um, <laughs> I want to find hypotenuse and so what trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse and it is sine so the sine of 62 equals opposite which is 22.6 over hypotenuse which is x so in the blue there sine of 62 equals 22.6 over x now the question is how do I solve for this x well let's first pull the x out of the denominator and we do that by clearing the denominator by multiplying both sides by x and once I do that as you know I could put a 1 underneath this x and when you see the fraction bar you think of division x divided by x that is uh, 1 so all of this cancels out and becomes an, an invisible 1 and I'm left with x times sine of 62 equals 22.6 that's what I've written down here but I want to solve for x I want to get x by itself so I need to uh, get rid of this sine of 62 and I'll tell you what, let me raise this up make it closer and easier oh, oh I messed up the whole thing I don't know. so here we go let's make it uh, closer to be able to, to see that and so how do I get rid of this sine uh, 62 uh, remember that sine 62 these are super glued together and cannot be uh, separated so uh, don't try to do something that removes only the 62 or that removes only the sine those guys are connected together and it's connected to the x through multiplication the inverse operation of multiplication is division so let's divide uh, both sides by 62 or I'm sorry <laughs> by the sine of 62 and so therefore I have x equals 22.6 divided by sine of 62 and what I did forget to do was to give you the keystrokes so if you have a, a normal uh, hold on a normal calculator not to say that the other ones are abnormal but uh, a calculator that does not have multi view in other words when you type in sign uh, if you do not see the word sign come up and everything that you're adding add on to that then uh, this is the keystroke that you would do if you do see the word sign come up on the, the view of your calculator then just type it in 22.6 divided by sine 20 or 62 and then hit enter and it'll give the answer but uh, for all the other calculators you have to hit 22 divide or 0.6 and then divided by so hit the divided by button and then 62 and then sign button and then remember what you see now on the uh, calculator view is just the sign of 62 so it's some decimal because after that in order to get the entire deal that you want you have to hit equal and that'll give you your entire uh, answer so 22.6 and then divided by 62 sine so now you're taking the sine of 62 and then equal 
and that'll give you your entire answer, which should be 25 point something or another. And you'll remember, I forget what the answer is there, but let's assume it's a 25 point, uh, let's say five, five, two or whatever. And we want to round it to the nearest tenth, as it says. So the decimal place, the tenth decimal place is the one directly to the right of the decimal point. Remember, this point, this is ones, tens, hundreds. To the right of the decimal point, though, is tenths with th. See the th there. And the next one is hundredths, thousandths, and so forth. So you look, you go to the tenths place, look to the right, and that number in this particular case. And again, I'm not sure what the exact number was, but let's uh, pretend that it is uh, five. So you ask yourself, is this number? five or higher, and in this case it is, so therefore you would add one to the tenth place, and uh, I know for sure the answer is uh, 25.6. Okay. Let's do the problem to be able to find y. <clears throat> I want to find the length of this side here, and so in this situation, here's my angle 62 degrees. I have the opposite and I want the adjacent. I have the opposite and I want the adjacent. So therefore, what trigonomic function uses opposite and adjacent? And it is tangent. So the tangent of 62 equals 22. It's, remember, it's opposite over adjacent. So 22.6 is my opposite and my adjacent is y and I clear the y very much the same way that I cleared the x here multiplying both sides by y and then I have to divide both sides by the tangent of 62 and then I have 22.6 divided by the tangent of 62 and remember in your calculator uh, you would enter 22.6 divided by 62 and then hit the tan button which would take the tangent of 62 and then hit equal to get you your full answer and that's going to be 12.0 uh, there. What I've done with these other ones is to set them up. Um, you've uh, seen that, I showed that to you in the beginning of the, uh, the video. So there are your answers and there's how to set it up. Here's for question 19. I know the numbering is off but uh, hang with me here. Uh, so here are your, your setup and also the answers for number 19. And then for 20, here is your setup and answer. So you can just pause the video and capture that information after you have wrestled with it yourself. Okay, make sure you wrestle with it yourself. Now let's look at the inverse um, cosine and sine and tangent. I did not talk about this yet in my regular class. Didn't have time. We'll do this after uh, in the spring uh, when we have more time. But let me remind you how to do this. First of all, uh, so we do not know what the measure of this angle is. All, all that they are telling us is that it's a right triangle and that I have two of the sides. And so the variable they use for the angle is theta. Theta. It says uh, like a, an O or a circle or a zero uh, and a uh, little squiggle in the middle of it, kind of like that. And that's the Greek letter theta. Uh, they could have put X here, but uh, they've chosen to, to use the Greek letter uh, theta. So I want to find the measure of this angle. Well, this is my hypotenuse. So I have the hypotenuse and I have the adjacent. What trig function uses uh, adjacent and hypotenuse? It's cosine. So the cosine of theta equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Adjacent is 12, hypotenuse is 13. So here's my equation. Cosine of theta equals 12 over 13. And in order to solve for the theta, I need to undo the cosine. And there I do that by using the inverse cosine. Uh, the inverse operation of cosine is the inverse cosine. And the symbol for inverse cosine is uh, COS 
with this uh, exponent of negative 1. It's not actually an exponent, it's just a symbol, a way of saying this is the inverse of the cosine. We could have, uh, and you'll see in some places, arc cosine. Uh, I think it's like that. A R C C O S. Uh, but the full word is arc cosine. So arc cosine is the same thing as inverse cosine. Two different words for the same same deal. So let's take the arc cosine of both sides of this equation. So the arc cosine of the cosine of theta and also the arc cosine of 12 over 13. And the arc cosine of cosine of theta, remember the arc cosine undoes the cosine and we're left with only theta. Pretty nice. And on the right hand side you have the uh, arc cosine, or the inverse cosine, sorry, <laughs> inverse cosine of 12 over 13, whatever way, whatever way you want to say that. And the way you would enter this into your uh, calculator, forgot to put that too, is uh, 12 and then divided by 13. And uh, what you could do here is hit equals. But what I've said in some, some of my classes is do open parentheses and then close parentheses. Or you could just do 12 divided by 13 and then equal. And that gives you your number that you want. And then second, I thought I put that here somewhere. And then second and then cosine. Okay. So uh, 12 divided by 13 equals, so now that gives you the, the entire number of what 12 divided by 13 is. And then you don't want the cosine, you want the inverse cosine. So the way to do that, notice on your calculator, uh, just above it, it has the uh, inverse cosine symbol. In fact, I probably should have a calculator here, but I don't, not easily available. So, let's move on, let me grab one. It's over here, no, it's not there. Is it here? Yep, here it is. I have a calculator. Okay, so uh, we, we want uh, not cosine, but we want inverse cosine. So to get that, we have to hit the, uh, um, the second button. And interestingly, here is to say stat. And I, I don't know how to get out of statistics. Mr. Patrick, please call Mr. Off, Lunar at on. Hey, hey, there it is. Isn't that weird? Patrick, I'm not sure how that works. So for some reason I had stats on there, and I should know, and I knew at one time, but I forgot. But it, uh, make sure that on your calculator you don't have stat. Also, hey, this is a good time to remind you. Uh, make sure that you don't have radians or gradients. So you push this button, at least on this particular calculator, push this button to make sure that you have degrees. Otherwise, all of your answers will be kablooey. It will be no good. So we were talking about getting the uh, arc cosine. So let's do that. Let's do 12. 12 divided by 13 and then equals. So now that's my entire answer. Not entire answer, but, but that's my 12 divided by 13. And then I do second. So see where it says second up here and then uh, cosine and that is my answer 22.6 and look to the right that uh, decimal is or that place value is uh, less than is not let me say it that way not five or higher uh, therefore it's 22.6 is your answer okay so i need to go pick up my daughter from school um, you have the rest of this information here. It's basically the same, same idea. So you can uh, uh, stop the video and take a picture of that or, or copy that information onto your uh, sheet of paper. Hopefully that is useful to you. I hope you have a good weekend otherwise. And may the Lord bless you and we'll see you in class.